Knowledge can be very important when it comes to fly fishing. Kelly is very well versed in the art of fly fishing and is an excellent teacher. Today we're at a tributary to the Elk River near Sparwood in the southeastern corner of British Columbia. This creek is full of nice sized West Slope cutthroat trout, so join us today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Well, today on Sport Fishing on the Fly, it's my pleasure to have fish with me today. Kelly Latch, usually Kelly's guiding us, but Don's not available today, so right. Kelly, you're going to join us and do a little fishing. We're doing small stream fishing today, and it's a tributary to the Elk River, but just look at some of the little techniques there are to fishing for West Slope cutthroats in a small stream like this. Well, there's a lot of small little tricks that you need to do. Uh, things you're going to be dealing with are small pieces of pocket water that we see right here in the stream in front of us. Uh, you're going to deal with a lot shorter line casts. You're going to have to deal with some really tricky mending situations. But more than anything, it's going to be dealing with having just a small amount of line out right. and learning how to manipulate the line to get a drift on the fly. I think you call that presentation. Presentation kind of exactly. covers all those things you just said. A lot of people think presentation is just tying the fly on or getting the right fly, but it's way more than that. It is. And presentation is the key to catching a lot of fish on these small streams. And from what we've already seen, just in that short sampling that we've done already today, it looks like there's a lot of fish here to be taken. <laughs> there's lots of fish, and there's some big fish too. Really? Yeah, yeah so it's so. Uh, some of the, the tips will show you where the big fish are lying. You bet. Yeah, well, let's check out. We've got some nice little pocket, nice little run up there. Let's, uh, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Yeah. Why don't you head down and take that fish down on that bottom there. There was another fish right down there. Okay. Feeding along that bank, that'll be a sneaky little cast. You have to kind of hunker up and he rose down in that down on that bottom seam in there. Okay. Head down and pick him up. I'll, I'll stay up here and see if there's another guy wanting something, a bigger meal or something like that, just for fun. It's like fishing in the old days, eh, when we were kids? It's like being a kid, yeah. It's like awesome. being a kid again. <laughs> Got him, Granny. All right, on. Oh boy, Cal. The old flav. <laughs> oh, he gave himself away, Wally. What? Fish gave himself away. You knew he was there. So you put on as an imitation there. You used the, a green drake imitation. Right. Which, it, I mean, could be a flav imitation pretty, too. Pretty close oh, to a flav. the size of this fish too. What? It's a big fish too. Not a bad fish, yeah. Yeah, this creek is uh, famous for, it's got not too many small fish. No. Main tributary of the elk, it's, it's a fabulous stream. So why wouldn't these fish move down into the elk? Well, there isn't to say that sometime during the year they won't. Yeah. But uh, as you can tell by the, by the hatches and the bugs that we're seeing up here, yeah. if I was a trout, this would probably be a place that I'd kind of want to hang out too as well. It'd be a good one, yeah. Um, Funny, I went through that area where you just picked this guy off with a hopper right. and didn't, didn't like the hopper. Didn't or like the hopper. chose not to go after the hopper. Right. Well. This stream does get a fair amount of pressure. It's yep. right along its little road, and, and uh, uh, it does see a few fishermen, you know. So West Slope cutthroats we got here. Yeah. Pretty one. Not a big one, but definitely a... Uh, oh, uh, gorgeous fish. Oh, though. a beautiful fish. Oh, yeah. All right, let's bring him up. Well done. What a beautiful, what a beautiful colored fish, though. Yeah, that's, you can hold that for me for a sec. Yeah. Get my hemostats out. That's, yeah. a, that's the same fly that, uh, if you saw our show on the Green Drakes last year, that Don tied on our show at the Crow's Nest River. All right, we're going to put him back in upstream a little bit. See if we can get him to <laughs> revive a bit there. Well, I'm going to actually put him there. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go down and watch. You'll find a big rock. Go nestle there we go. Yeah, find a rock in yeah. there and nestle in. Yeah. Revive. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Well, thanks a lot for letting me fish. <laughs> hey, That's well, yeah. That's pretty nice of you to let me let me uh, 
Well, you know, Dawn's Take busy, so we got to get somebody else in there. That's right. It's kind of nice to be able to fish for a day. Most of the time, I'm so busy, I can I don't have the time. So yeah. it's really nice to get out and do a little fishing with Let's you do guys. This. Let's show everybody this fly here. Right, sure, sure. Actually, a, a flav and a green drake are very, very similar to each other. So the pattern that we use is, is uh, almost the same. Yeah. Just something big, something green. All the, yeah, the difference is the tail, right? The flav's got the very short tail. Flav's got a very short tail. This one has a longer tail, but the trout really don't seem to care. I mean, West Slopes are, if, it, if the color and the shape and the size are close, yeah. that's really about all you'll have to worry about. And then presentation becomes a big, de big deal. Good yeah. presentation. Okay. As you said, you walked over with it with a hopper, yep. and it had nothing to do with your presentation. It, it just had to do with the bug. Yep, just they didn't, too want, they didn't yep. want a hopper, they wanted this. Yep. Isn't that interesting? It's, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Think like a fish. That's right. Whoa. Oh, remember what we were doing down below? We got in that, where you caught the big guy from? Right. We were just dapping it in. Well, I'll show you the, the run where I pulled this guy out of. Doing the same thing, just pull it up, dap it, let it go through. And he came from underneath, there's a log over there. He came from up underneath that log. Unbelievable. And uh, took it and he Beautiful. made a nice, nice fish. He rocky in the bottom? Oh, he maybe has. Yeah. Yeah, he's rocking, I think. Yeah. It wasn't moving enough. I kind of figured that. Oh, I was trying to wait for the camera to show up, but oh, he was, he was like the first fish you caught. Right on. Big fish. I don't know if he's Whoa. off or is he? Don't break your rod over it. Do you feel like he's still on there? He did a minute ago because I felt him run and then all of a sudden this stops. So I think yeah, he's he rocked, probably... He rocked you in the log. There's a log under there or a rock under there. Yeah, slack it log. off and see what happens. He's trying to slack. Yeah. Yeah, he's probably gone underneath that log over Pull there. Pull it, break it. Yeah. Well, what do we got there? Get yeah. a little green drake imitation, but it seems to be working pretty good. Seems to be working good. Well, I just lost a big one. Oh. Good fish. Bummer. Yeah. Oh, well. We were just getting ready to head down river, so I think we'll do that. We're going to take a break right now. We're going to come back. We're going to be down the lower part of the river. And I just can't believe there's this big a fish in water that is this shallow, this little bit of water. It's funny, you know, these, these tributaries of these bigger rivers seem to really do that. They have a tendency to hold some very, very large fish. Yeah. And it uh, makes for absolutely exciting fishing, you know. Yeah. Just like the days when we were awesome. kids. <laughs> it's great. Let's, uh, let's roll and get out of the horse flies here. All right, let's go. Let yeah, him run. he's going. Oh man, down you go, buddy. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs> At least I hooked this guy. Missed the last one. We got a train here. Awesome job. Way to go, man. <laughs> oh, great job. I just can't believe how many fish there are in this place here. I can't believe there's a train right now, too, but hey, whatever. There you, buddy. You can do the guy thing. Let him run here. Let's get him down in this pocket over here, Granny. That's a beautiful cutthroat. That is pretty. Wow, they are truly the dry fly species of, of the world, I think. Isn't that beautiful? That is awesome, yeah. Small streams, just with fish that size in small streams, it just makes it such a joy to fish. Oh, yeah. I love it. Fantastic yeah. job. Nice yeah. hookup. Right on. Great men. Good <laughs> line control. I yeah, love you it. Betcha. That's what it takes. Presentation. That's right. All yeah. right, let's go. Well, today on the bench, I'm going to tie you up the flab mayfly, that fly that Grant and Kelly are using on the waters today and catching all the fish. The only difference between a green drake and a flab is the green drakes are a little bigger, have a nice yellow rib to them, and they have longer tails than the flabs. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie this fly. To tie up the flab, we're going to use a TMC 100 size 12 hook. We use some ADOT black thread, some moose mane tips for the tail, some moose mane strands for the body, for the wing, we'll use some gray calf tail and a light done hackle for the hackle. I'm going to start the fly off by tying in a nice gray calf tail wing. And I'm going to measure it up the length of the hook and do a couple loose wraps first and then tighten up. And make sure you tie in this calf tail first. It's really tough to put on the body if you don't get the calf tail in first. And make sure you use calf tail because it does make such a nice big upright wing. I've taken four moose mane tips. 
and we're going to tie these in for the tail. And when you tie it in, make sure you keep it fairly short. Flaps have a real short tail. We're now going to take about 10 moose mane strands, and I'm going to tie them in by the tips because I want this body to be tapered. So we'll tie it in by the tips, and then slowly take the moose mane and wrap it forward to form the body. Well, since that moose mane is so fragile, I like to coat the body after I've tied it on. So what I'm going to do is I've got some Loon hard head finish here, and you can use Days Flex Cement or even some head cement. And I'm just going to take this Loon product and cement up the body. Well, for the finishing steps, I'm going to take a nice light done hackle, and we're going to tie it in behind the wing and wrap forward. Make sure you tie in that hackle good. Snip off the excess, and then we're just going to wrap the hackle. Well, there it is, the finished flab mayfly. One thing about a flab is it is quite large, and it is a really good food item for fish because it is so large. And one thing to make sure when you're tying it, keep that wing nice and high. They really like a nice big wing on the fly. Why don't we head back to Michelle Creek and see how Grant and Kelly are making out. So what was it there? I, th I thought I'd laid it right over him. You think it's fly difference, or you think no, it's just it was? No, I don't think so. I just think his lane is really, really tiny. That's like they, they're they're, they're just you... in one little feeding lane, and just very, very small, very tight. So anything that comes down that lane, they're going to come up right. and get. Right, it, it was really tight. So the trick was is lay it over the lane until. Sometimes too, they're on a cycle. They'll they'll feed and then they'll move back to the bottom, move back into their lane, and then they start to look up again for the food. And okay. If you get it in the timing sequence of that of their feed. Oh, that's a good point Because he was yeah. timing pretty calm, like he came up three yeah. times. Yeah, we were yeah, we're right there, right? fly on, yeah. So I think it was more of a timing thing. Again, another absolutely Gorgeous. beautiful West Slope. Unbelievable. In a very tiny stream, eh? Yeah. Well, obviously these guys are in absolutely superb physical condition too. Whoa. Well, we're at the end of, end of August, right? Oh, we're not even the end of August, just past the middle of August. Mm -hmm. Is it the 19th of August? And, uh, got a nice day for this. Beautiful fish. I love West Slope cuts. Right? I beautiful? just love the looks of them, yeah. Them it's the nice there. colors, but they also just look like such a firm fish, too. And they're wonderful dry fly fish. They just, they will take a dry fly readily, you know, and we don't have to nymph them very often. Right. So for us as guides, they make them <laughs> for the purest, they're probably one of the finest fish to fish for. They yeah. really are. Yeah. Well, well get the, in there, Granny. The get best place is the, uh, these Kootenays here. That's right. There's so many different places here you can go fish. Well, especially for some of this small stream stuff, which is just fabulous weather and fabulous weather. Oh, there he is. There's another one. Did you see that? Beautiful job. Nice right. fish. Well, you're already sitting under the branches up over there, too. Oh, yeah. Well, you've had some, some big fish that have uh, been in some pretty interesting locations, too. We're just kind of in the trees right now. and. Uh, yeah, that's a good fish. <laughs> Unbelievable, awesome. Beautiful stream, beautiful fish. Man, whoa, not happy. Oh, well, he's sitting in that rock there. Hopefully he'll play himself out. Well, you can do that or you could try and swing him right into these soft runs over here if you can, I don't know. Tough call here on where to deal with him. Yeah, it's the one problem with these streams, the water does move pretty quick. Yeah. And these, I mean, we're fishing with four-way rods. Maybe we should talk about the rod setups that we've chosen today. Right, we decided to go with two four weights. But you know, in all honesty, we didn't think we were gonna catch the size of fish that we were catching today either. Right, but these are fast action four weights and yeah. they can handle, they can easily handle larger fish. So we're really not too worried about that. Um, what's nice about these is they handle shorter distance line better than, they, than right. a bigger rod in a five or a six. Right. So it's one of the reasons why we chose to go to a smaller rod. So we've also, got we're not fighting wind yeah. So we've, we've right. got a better situation in here for a lighter weight rod. And eight and a half foot rods too. We've got a little bit longer for, well, I mean, nine and a half would be a long rod. Eight and a half foot seems to be right. We'll be able to get the men's in that we want. And look at the size of that cuts are <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it's a beauty. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. Oop, there he goes. He popped right off. No Just problem like that. No, we don't get the good close up of him, but, well, it's a good thing we found out that they were feeding on, what are they called again? But the, not the green drakes, but the flabs. Flabs. Flab is. I'm going to remember the name Flab. Yeah, Flab is a. Uh, he's a type of mayfly that's very common to this region of British Columbia, and they're uh, 
They're quite large and they're often mistaken for a green drake. They really aren't. The green drake imitation is working excellent. It looks just like it, so it should work just fine. Well, let's see if we can get another one. Okay. Been a fun I day. don't think I'm having much luck with my gray, my gray drake. I think I may have to go to a flav imitation. <laughs> <laughs> one of the joys about going out with a guy, Kelly, is you get to pick their brain and, and see what you guys do when you're fishing. Usually when you fish with a guy, the guy's just usually telling you what to do, but today we actually got the pleasure of having you fish with us. You just get to see lots of little tips that you're doing that you know, make your presentation better, that give you better opportunity to catch fish. Well, we spend a lot of time on the water and we get a chance to see a lot of different levels of casters. And I see a lot of different types of real good fishermen and, and some weaker. And you start learning real quickly that there are certain ways to present the fly and certain ways not to. One of them, one of my one of my favorite things to do is to, I see fishermen doing, or one of the problems I see is they'll cast a fly into a given piece of water and we've all heard that wonderful sound we when you- We just heard it there. You yeah, snap it up just like that, it sounds like, like a little pop. Yeah. To stop doing that little pop, if you wanna try and eliminate that, especially on this slow, flat water that we're fishing here right now, the way to do that is allow the line, as it drifts out of its zone where you thought the fish was, as soon as it comes down below you, Vibrate the tip of the line as you lift it and then pick it up. Oh, what that'll really? do is break that surface yeah. tension, make it so the fly lifts right out very softly and easily. But uh, instead of making that sound that you hear every time we pull it up. <laughs> yeah. All right, good tip. Yeah. Okay, well, we should probably try and get that next hole up there. Well, we saw, that's where we caught that big one up there. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think that parachute hopper will probably do the job for you. So uh, right why don't we get up there and give it a try. Okay. All right. Look at the size of him for a small stream. Isn't that amazing? Unbelievable. Like you can walk across here, you won't get your knees wet. What a beautiful cut. Unbelievable. You know, how many rivers? I mean, this isn't just one unique river here in the East Kootenays of British Columbia. There's right. so many rivers you got here. You can go and fish and catch big cuts like this. Right. Do you want to do the guide thing on this? Oh, I could do that. That'd sure. be great. You bet. Help me out with this big guy here. Let me just uh, put the rod down. How do you like the rod? It's beautiful. What were we using? Uh, these Marriott's I'm very impressed with. Very, very impressed. That's an eight and a half foot four weight rod you got right, on there, right? Right, yeah. Got a, got a, uh, running a little overlined it with a five weight line, but it still casts beautifully. I don't really here, need I'll pull to... them into the shore edge here, Granny, and she, she'll okay. hunker behind this rock and you should be able to, should be able to land him pretty comfortably. There you go. There you go. Come out of there, eh? There you go. It was barbless hook too. We did yeah, barbless. Just, yeah, caught just... in the bone. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. We're having a heck of a time with this big guy. There we go. You got him. Got him? Yeah, he wants to go too. All right. He's going. He's going to sit right there. Yeah. Where are you going? Unbelievable fish. Awesome. Oh, what a great day of fishing. I'm spent. I've had a good day. I mean, yeah. we've covered a lot of water today. And uh, we've caught a lot of fish just like that guy right there. Yep. Think he's ready? And that's been some of the small ones that we've been catching. Whoa, well, I didn't think he would be. I think so. I'm gonna reach down there and just pop that out without, uh, and lift them up a little bit there. Come on. There you go, it's just like that. Yeah. You know, when we got here, I thought we were maybe gonna catch fish. Not quite that big, that would be a big one. We caught some bigger fish today. This stream holds definitely some larger fish. Again, it's a tributary of the Elk River. Yeah. And, and that means Elk River has some very large fish in it, and you can expect some of its bigger tributaries to have exactly the same thing. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's been an awesome day of Thank fishing. Thank you. I enjoy fishing with you. It's just a blast. Uh, it's just like the old days for us fishing, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, it's great. When you get a chance to get out in the wild, make sure you take care, conserve the waters, and give Kelly a call at St. Mary's Angler and Guide Service because he'll get you into a place like this. It's awesome. It's catch and release fishing, a single barbless hook, you know, it's, and it's an incredible fishery. It really is. Yeah. See you next time when we take you sport fishing on the fly. Thanks, bud. Great day. Want to try one more? Of course. All right.